Konnichiwa, everybody. All right, so this video is for explicit formulas of arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. All right, so let's look at the formulas. Again, this is a uh, unit that's kind of heavy on the formulas, but basically, if you look at the arithmetic and geometric sequences, we can relate those to some things that we've been doing before. So for arithmetic sequences, the formula is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Now, remember in class, I related this d is the slope of a linear equation. Okay, And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that in this video later on. But let's go on to the geometric sequence. So the formula, the explicit formula for a geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1, or the initial term, whatever the starting term is, times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. And again, remember I related this to exponential equations. Okay, We'll talk a little bit more about that later on in this video. But let's look at what we can do with an explicit formula of the arithmetic sequences. Okay, so let's look at this sequence right here. We're trying to find the explicit formula. So I want you guys to find the explicit formula for this sequence. So the first thing we need to figure out is, is it arithmetic or is it geometric? Well, if we look at this, 2 plus 11 or 2 plus 9 would give me the 11. 11 plus 9 would give me 20. 20 plus 9 gives me 29. So what I'm showing here is that we have a common difference, so our D is 9. If we have a common difference that we're adding to get to the next term, that means this is arithmetic. And so again, if you're asked to write the explicit formula, write it down. A sub n is equal to, wow, some good thunder right there. And the thunder rolls. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, I'm done with that. Enough singing. You're not here to watch, hear, hear me sing, although I'm sure that, yeah, no, I suck. Anyway, so a sub n is equal to the initial term plus the n minus 1 times the common difference. Okay, so the initial term is just the first term. So we have those two things we're given. It's pretty simple. Let's plug those in and let's simplify that equation. So we have 2 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Now, this isn't completely simplified, so let's simplify this a little bit further. So I'm going to distribute this 9 to the n minus 1. There we go again. Yeah, buddy. So a sub n is equal to, well, this 2 just stays a 2, but now 9 times n becomes 9n and negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. And so now let's look at this. If we combine our like terms, we have a 9n, and then 2 minus 9 gives me a negative 7. So if we look at this, this looks like an equation that we've been dealing with before. This is an equation to a linear line, or just a line. So you may not notice it like this, but if I change a sub n to y and the n to x, Hey, that's y equals mx plus b right there. That is a straight line where the slope is 9 and the y-intercept is negative 7. Now, one thing that I just kind of want to talk about is why is that not 2? You say, some people might say, well, our first term was 2, so I thought that would be the y-intercept. Well, when we look in sequences, normally we talk about the first term as x or n being 1. And if n is x, and x is 1, well, that's not our uh, intercept, is it? So if my starting value is 2, that's going to be the point 1, 2, really. So then what I need to do to find my y-intercept if I wanted to, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, is I need to subtract what my slope is from that first term. So I subtract 9, and I'd get my y-intercept down here, okay? Now this, I'm just kind of talking to be a little bit extra. Hopefully you guys can get a little bit of extra understanding of what's going on here. Um, it's not going to be on your test, but it does kind of help with conceptualize what is going on here. So this, again, the common difference is the slope of the line. And so we could put that into our calculator, graph it, and then we could find all the answers to everything. Now, one thing that's good with the explicit formula 
that a recursive formula cannot do for us is let's say we wanted to find the 50th term. Well, using the explicit formula, we can go straight to a sub 50. If we were using the recursive formula, remember we would have to find the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, all the way up to 50. So we'd have to do a lot of iterations of that formula. The 50th term in the explicit formula is very simple. We just plug in 50 for n. Notice that would be 50 for x, so x would be all the way out here, and our line would be sh way up above my screen, because that's a pretty steep slope for this. But if we do this, we get 450 minus 7, which is 443. And so that's what the explicit formula can do of an arithmetic sequence. Now, let's try to find the explicit formula for the geometric sequence in the previous video that I showed. So the sequence went 1.2, 7.2, 43.2, 48.2, 2, and 259.2. Now, if you remember or recall, when we looked at this, we found out that it's not going to be an arithmetic sequence because I would add 6 here, add 36 here, and so these are not common, so the, there is no common difference. So it must be a geometric, or probably is going to be. So I needed to check. So I set up all my ratios, and I checked to see if they are all the same number. And sure enough, when I looked at all the ratios, they are all equal to 6. So my common ratio is 6. My initial term is 1.2. And now I want to find the explicit formula. So again, write down the, what the formula is. The explicit formula for a geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to the first term, a sub 1, times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. Okay, now, so let's plug these values in for it. So a sub 1 is 1 1.2 times, now I like to put this in parentheses sometimes, and I'll kind of tell you why here in a little bit. And then n minus 1, remember the n minus 1 is an exponent, so you got to write it up high, a superscript. Now, a lot of my students try to multiply these two terms together, but if you remember order of operations, parentheses, then exponents. Well, we have an exponent right here that's trying to be applied to the 6. We can't really do anything with it because it is a variable right now, so I can't apply it. So that means I'm halted. I can't do anything with this and this, so I can't multiply these until I get rid of the exponent. Okay? So this is simplified. That's a complete simplified explicit formula right here. Now, I can make a correlation to this. Remember if a sub n is the y and n is the x, this is 1.2 times 6 and we're going to get rid of the minus 1. Let's just say it's just x. So that's an x right there. It's kind of an ugly x, but oh well. But remember if you look at this, this looks exactly like an, a, uh, <laughs> I can't, gosh dang it, I can't think again. Um, exponential formula, or equation, there we go. Exponential equation. Now, so these have the same form as an exponential equation. And remember one thing about those is once they started getting bigger, they started getting huge really fast. Now, Let's look again and let's see if we can find the the tenth term of this. Remember, if we were using the recursive formula to find the tenth term, we'd have to first find the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and then tenth. So normally, if we're not trying to find the very next couple or three terms, it's easier to use the recursive or the explicit formula. So let's just find a sub ten, the tenth term. So I'm replacing the n with a ten, so ten minus one up top. So that means six to the power of nine. times 1.2. So if we do that in the calculator, we get a huge number. Again, with geometric sequences or exponential equations, we can get a really big number really fast. So that is 12,093,235.2. So that's one thing with uh, geometric sequences, remember that it just gets out of hand fast, or it can.
Thanks for watching.